autobiography of a great indian bustard which is the heaviest flying bird in india well friends it's me the great indian bustard i feel proud to be known as the great indian bustard i have more than 30 different names in various indian languages in marathi i am known as maldhok or whom i can weigh up to 18 kilos and can stand up to 4 feet in height reaching up to your shoulders or even higher i have got a long white neck brown wings tall yellow legs and a black cap on my head my wife mrs bustard is smaller and slimmer than i am and her neck is not white but i have heard humans say that we both look impressive I live on grasslands and deserts along with my other friends including chinkara black buck and larks I eat everything including snakes lizards small fruits and berries and all sorts of insects that's a very healthy habit but grasshoppers and beetles are my favorite food items when it starts raining we all gather at our favorite grasslands where there are no people to disturb us I perform a wonderful dance by gulping air in the special feathery pouch attached below my neck. This pouch helps me to produce a resonating sound similar to the one produced by the cow. Hmm. I dance in joy with puffed out feathers and cocked up tail and drop down wings. It helps me to impress my soulmate. You know that we birds lay eggs and our young ones hatch out of eggs mother great indian bustard lays just one egg directly on the ground we don't believe in building nests but we have a special trick to protect our eggs from predators the egg looks like a stone monitor lizards foxes dogs pigs snakes and eagles are enemies of my egg and chick but my wife protects the egg from all of them by the time a young one hatches out of the egg rains arrive there's plenty of grass swarming with insects fresh food for my family young ones of other birds soon fly away from the nest but a great indian bustard mother and chick stay together for nearly one year the chick learns many good habits from the mother you may have heard about a great human friend of ours dr salim ali he had even suggested that we should be given the status of the national bird of our country but the honor went to our beautiful relative the peacock i am happy to tell you that i am the state bird of rajasthan we have got 10 sanctuaries for our protection but sadly our number is still going down we used to live in all parts of india but slowly the growing population of man pushed us away from more than 90% of our home regions we are afraid of hunters that kill us for fun we also die due to electric power lines that we can't see while flying we are losing our homes today only the last 200 of us are left in the world we need your support and love in order to survive can you help us you can write letters to your leaders and make an appeal to help us you can make my drawing and submit it to your teacher you can discuss this with your parents come to see us at a sanctuary because now you will not see us in any other places and who knows If humans don't help us none of us will be left on the earth you will see only see us in pictures written by Dr Pramod Patel thank you meanings impressive having the ability to attract admiration and respect soulmate someone best suited for you predator an animal that kills and eats other animals swarming to fly or move in large numbers 
status, social, legal or professional position. Sanctuaries, a place where birds or animals are protected from being hunted. Pouch, here it means a pocket-like space, resonating, producing a loud, clear and deep sound. Thank you. This chapter is an autobiography of a great Indian bustard. The bird introduces itself by saying that it's the heaviest flying bird in India and is also very proud to tell us that it has about 30 different names in different Indian languages. It says that in Marathi it is known as Maldhok or Hum. The great Indian Bastard tells us that it weighs about 18 kilos and has a height of about 4 feet. So, and it also tells us that it ever, if it ever comes near your, you, then it could easily reach your shoulder or even higher. It says that it's got a long white neck, brown wings, tall yellow legs and a black cap on its head. His wife, Mrs. Bastard, is smaller and slimmer and he says that she does not have a white neck but he is very proud of the fact that most humans consider these birds as very very impressive that is someone who attracts a lot of admiration and respect. Great Indian Bastard tells us about where it lives and with whom. He says that he lives on grasslands and deserts along with his friends like the chinkara, black buck and larks. He says that he loves eating uh, snakes, lizards, small fruits and berries and all kinds of insects and he considers it to be a very healthy habit. But he also tells us the secret that grasshoppers and beetles are its favorite food items. It's very happy to tell us that when the rain starts coming in, they all gather together in their favorite grasslands and perform their wonderful dance. Now it tells us that the wonderful dance is performed by gulping in air or taking in air in the special feathery pouch attached just below their neck. This pouch helps him to produce a very strong, clear and loud sound is similar to the one produced by cow which sounds more like whom. I think that's the reason this bird is also known as whom in Marathi. It says that it dances in joy with puffed out feathers and cocked up tail and drop down wings. It also tells us that it's a great way to try and impress his soulmate. A soulmate is someone who is who one thinks that is best suited for him as his partner. It tells us that they lay eggs and their young ones hatch out of eggs. Mother great Indian Bastard, he says, lays just one egg directly on the ground. He says that they don't believe in building nests, but they have a special trick by which they can protect their eggs from predators. Now predators are animals that kill and eat other animals. And what's the trick? The trick is that their egg looks like a stone. So their predators or their enemies which he says are mostly monitor lizards, foxes, dogs, pigs, snakes and eagles are easily fooled because the egg looks like a stone. And he also very proudly says that his wife protects the egg from all the enemies. He says by the time the young one hatches out of the egg, the rains set in and because the rains come in, there is plenty of grass all around and because there is grass all around, there's lots and lots of insects swarming everywhere. Swarming means to fly or move in large numbers. 
So since there are lots and lots of insects, there is directly lots and lots of fresh food for the entire family. Now the young ones of these birds stay with their mother almost for a year and they get to learn a lot of good habits from their mother. He very respectfully talks about his great human friend Dr. Salim Ali. He says that Dr. Salim Ali was the one who had suggested that the great Indian bustard be given the status of being the national bird of our country. But the honor then went to their beautiful relative, the peacock. But then he is happy to tell us that he is the state bird of Rajasthan. He says that they have got around 10 sanctuaries for their protection. Sanctuary is a place where birds or animals are protected from being hunted. Though he is happy that there are about 10 sanctuaries where they can stay and be protected, but he also wants to tell us that there was a time when they used to live in almost all parts of India. But he says that because of the rapid, fast growing population of human, they have been pushed out or they have been thrown out of their own homes. Almost about 90% of their home, their area where they used to stay, like basically the forest area is gone is taken over by humans for their own development. He is sad to tell us that they are reducing in number very fast. He also says that they are afraid of the hunters who kill them just for fun. He says that most of them land up dying because of the electric power lines which they are unable to see when they fly. And he says that they are losing home. He says that there are facts to prove that not more than 200 of them are left in the entire world and he is asking for our support. He says that only the support and love of us humans can help them survive and he is asking of us if we can help them. He is even going ahead and giving us ideas by which we can help them. He says that we can write letters and appeal to our leaders to take up their cause so that they have a place to stay, so that they can survive, so that the rest of the 200 can stay in peace without any danger. He says that we can make drawings and submit them to, their, to our teachers. He even goes to say that please, if possible, we should all discuss their problem with our own parents. At the end, with a little hope, he does tell us that we should come and visit him at the sanctuary because he says it's only the sanctuary where we can see them because nowhere else now they have a place called home and he says his only hope is now on us humans only and only if the humans step in and try to save them can they survive so he says that we are their only hope he says that if we do not try and help them then we would never get to see them in person. We would only have to suffice by seeing them in pictures and pictures alone. So he makes a humble request for us humans to try and help him, help them, the great heaviest flying bird in India. Question answers of Autobiography of a Great Indian Bustard which is the heaviest flying bird in India and what is it called in Marathi? The Great Indian Bustard is the heaviest flying bird in India. It has more than 30 different names in various Indian languages and in Marathi it is called the Maldhog or Whom. Describe the Great Indian Bustard. 
The Great Indian Bustard weighs up to 18 kilos and is about 4 feet in height. It has a long white neck, brown wings, tall yellow legs and a black cap on its head. The female Indian Bustard is smaller and slimmer and her neck is not white. The Great Indian Bustard is a very impressive bird. What does the Great Indian Bustard eat? The Great Indian Bustard lives on grasslands and deserts. It eats snakes, lizards, small fruits and berries and almost all kinds of insects. Grasshoppers and beetles are its favorite food items. Describe the dance that the Great Indian Bustard performs when it starts raining. When it starts raining, they gather on their favorite grasslands. They perform the wonderful dance by gulping air in the special feathery pouch attached below their neck. This pouch helps them to produce a loud, clear and deep sound similar to the one produced by the cow. They dance and enjoy with puffed up feathers. How many eggs does a gr mother great Indian bustard lay and what trick helps them in protecting their eggs? The great Indian bustard lays just one egg directly on the ground. They don't build nests. Eggs look like stones which give them protection from predators. Name the enemies of the great Indian bustards egg and chick. Monitor lizards, foxes, dogs, pigs, snakes and eagles are enemies of the great Indian bustards eggs and chicks. For how long does the great Indian bustard mother and chick stay together? By the time the young one hatches out of the egg, it's rainy season. There is lots of grass all around bringing in lots of insects which is fresh food for the bustard family. The great Indian bustard mother and chick stay together for nearly one year during which the chick learns many good habits from the mother. What had Dr. Salim Ali suggested? Dr. Salim Ali had suggested that the great Indian bustard be given the status of being the national bird of India. Great Indian Bustard, the state bird of which state? The Great Indian Bustard is the state bird of Rajasthan. Why is the Great Indian Bustard asking us for our support and love? The growing population of man has resulted in Great Indian Bustard being pushed out of nearly 90% of their home area. Their number is fast decreasing because of hunters and the electric power lines that they cannot see while flying. That's why they are asking for our support and love so that they can survive. What does the Great Indian Bustard suggest that we could all do to help them? The Great Indian Bustard suggests that we all write letters to our leaders and make an appeal to help them. They say we can also draw pictures and submit it to our teachers. They even suggest us to discuss their, their plight and problems with our parents. Thank you.